Hello and welcome to Star Citizen Sunday. This is a weekly show which covers all the news from Star Citizen from the week just past. I am your host, Mac, so let's get on with it. This week, we see progress on Microtech's Metro and check out the latest on the 890 Jump. CIG are picking fruit from plants. Plus, we still have this Tumbrel Ranger 3 pack to give away. So make sure you follow the link in the description so you don't miss out. So on Inside Star Citizen this week, they first looked into the thruster damage. Now they're going through all the current thrusters and maneuvering thrusters and adding health to them plus collision attributes so they can be shot. They need to make sure that all the thrusters are a little more visible so that they can be hit. You can see the damage on it change as they are hit as well. Plus the main thrusters have their visual effects uh, as they transition from healthy to not healthy. In the future they say we will be able to shoot through the hull with this pierce ability tech and hit the thrusters which I do really like the sound of that. They had a quick chat to a couple of people who are working on the client to server networking. Basically they say the client talks to the server, they want to improve the, the perceived lag and desync. Currently Star Citizen is client authoritative, meaning that when a player presses forwards, the player moves forwards and then it, the info is sent up to the server and that changes on the server itself, which gives the impression sometimes that you are teleporting around and it looks a bit odd. When they switch to server to client, this will improve the information coming from the server, which reduces the perceived lag and desync, making it much smoother. Not more was said, we kind of knew all this anyway, but it's good to hear them talking about it. So they had a quick sprint update. I do love these sprint updates. They are they're currently continuing with the clustered harvestables. So testing assets to spawn clusters of harvestable entities in various degrees of density and distance from one another, basically plants and crops how they spawn if they spawn naturally. This should also be applicable to surface side mineable entities and asteroids. It'll be a little while till we get this in game but this is the groundwork for it being able to pick fruit, store fruit, sell fruit, eat fruit, all this sort of stuff. It's all coming together but slowly and it looks cool. As for Subflare they're working on holographic imaging helmets for the new subscriber flare. We also saw this cool Centurion helmet as well this is part of the revamped subflare that they're working on. These items will not be available anywhere else, which is good. I really love the idea of being able to display an image on the on the ex externals of your helmet, which kind of gives that sort of psychological warfare aspect to it. Now for the Banu Defender, they are working on material development. What we see here is an untextured version of the Defender's exterior. And as the team explores a variety of alien material types to make sure it works with lighting and whatnot, uh, it'll be interesting to see which ones they choose. They also worked on Microtech's buildings and interiors. This is more of the high-tech common element set. We saw the transit hub for Microtech with a hot dog and a burrito. Very, very unusual. But it's looking nice. Very much looking forward to visiting Microtech. To finish off with, we had a quick 890 jump tour. This is coming in 3.6. It is in the final art phase now, adding the final textures and lighting. We got to see the foyer the social hub with the bar, toilets and service lift. We also got to see the dining area, the pool. It is looking really, really nice. Uh, and I'm looking forward to getting a, getting on board one of these and doing a tour myself. But that was it for Inside Star Citizen. Do let me know your thoughts, guys. Let's move on. So this week's Star Citizen Live, they had a live audience from people who visited the LA studio asking their questions. First question being, can we have separate bindings for throttle and strafe forwards? This is obviously for HOTAS users. Uh, they say it's not impossible and they will take that info and see if they can get it in. The flight model is still being tweaked and currently they're experimenting with finer controls, specifically in atmosphere. The next question is, what tech is holding back the cargo lifts of the Caterpillar to allow them to go up and down? Which I think is a great question. It's been a long time since we've uh, seen anything on this. Now they've said they've built a lot of tech for this, the interaction state machine, so you know, holding F and seeing all the choices you have is one of them. Basically, it's in the backlog, they just need to get a designer freed up to get on with it. They are planning to look at the interaction system next quarter, so hopefully it gets slotted in then. Someone asked regarding roads and getting them into the persistent universe, and they say it's just a matter of priority. Don't expect anything in the next three months, but maybe in quarter four, but it's not set in stone. Uh, how will scanning help the exploration mechanic? Now, they couldn't answer exactly, but they have got sort of a scanning and radar bible, as they call it. It basically explains exactly how they want scanning to work now and in the future. The plan is for a scan to gather basic info and then store this info. Um, things like mineable rocks, passengers in a ship, the faction that they belong to, the ship health. 
the cargo, the cargo type, whether it's illicit or illegal or whatnot. Basically store all this information on a data module. The whole data gathering and storing system has changed a lot to allow for a much broader gameplay. And for exploration, they say you may find a data module and scan it and then recover some information to reveal something worth exploring. Basically just opening up a lot of mission variations for designers to create. Unfortunately, nothing too specific, uh, but it would be nice to hear a bit more on this Bible, this um, plan that they have for scanning and radar. Someone asked if we will see or even be able to wear UEE uniforms in the Persistent Universe. Now they haven't got any plans for releasing them yet. They will likely do this after Squadron 42 is released. Things like the ranks are fleshed out in terms of what they wear. But they want to make sure they figure out what the UEE do in the PU after Squadron 42's campaign. You know, are they a peacekeeping company? Are they a guild? Are they a faction? Don't expect anything before Squadron 42, um, but we'll see more afterwards. Next question is, what will we see going forwards in terms of persistence? So they say there's several levels of persistence. They're currently working on the server-side streaming persistence. So if a player sees a ship leave and it despawns to him, but the server still sees it. So basically, if no one's around, then the server doesn't need to have that ship there until someone comes into its vicinity. But if that ship got damaged before leaving the area, then when it came back again, the damage will still need to be there. That will still need to persist. They are working on it now. Global persistence itself is um, a server gathering and storing all the information on the entities that are around. Later on, server meshing will allow for all entity info to be stored in the global universe and transition between each server. Server-side OCS, they say, will have a dramatic effect on performance. Currently, there are serious limitations to how much more content they can put on the server. Uh, so it has to come pretty much ASAP. It will require a lot of people to work on this and it will take precedence over everything else. The devs will still be able to work on other features, but priority will obviously be server-side OCS. They have got an internal calendar of when they want things to come, but it's, it's not a, like 100%, it's just a plan. Uh, but it sounds like we may see um, object container streaming coming before 3.8, which I would expect because 3.8 brings Microtech. They obviously cannot fit much more content into the game at the moment without it lagging and causing problems. So they need to get it in for 3.8. Hopefully, we see it earlier. Next question is, any ideas on how player inventories will work? Will each ship carry only what you stow, or will they share items from a global inventory? Now, physical inventory on the roadmap just means everything. So, players, ships, boxes. They're also talking about ship cargo size, which isn't obvious at the moment. So, you know, cargo clamps versus actual space. This also will bring lootables. Not much more was said, but this is a feature that I am very much looking forward to. Planning your missions, making sure you have the equipment. Next question is, will we be able to tell the state or and health of a, of a player visibly? I think they mean like damage on the skin and whatnot. But they did say that they've got some tech limitations at the moment for this kind of thing. First thing they need to be able to do is see the state of the character and then change the armor state to fit more armor types. So basically each armor carries their own stats. So is it damage resistance? O2 generation, perks, climate control. Each armor set will represent a gameplay type. This will allow the players to see what another player has in mind. So if you see someone in a combat outfit, you know they're pretty much going to be there for, for FPS maybe. Which I could suppose would help in spoofing yourself. You could set a trap wearing an explorer suit and look like you pose no threats. And then when they come in, you can have all your buddies come after them. Uh, but they are working on player status system. So health, hunger, thirst knockdown resistance and so forth. The FPS scanning will let you know what health someone is at, specifically dirt and wear on an item doesn't necessarily mean health, it just means that it's been worn and used over time. They would love to get the ship style damage on characters, but right now it's not possible, so that's why they really need to work on that tech side of things to transfer it over. Now someone asked what's the salvage rollout plans and when will we see the reclaimer systems all working. Now inventory they say is one of the big ones for salvage. Also the player interaction system is another. There are no tech limitations on the ship side of things. They just need a more robust system for ship debris and derelicts. They want ship items inside to remain. So if a ship blows up the content stays there. So they need to figure how that's going to work first. The first version may just be kind of similar to mining items from ships using the reclaimer um, while they get it working. 
Next question is, what would be the player count once server-side object container streaming comes out? Now they say it's hard to say, but as many as they can get basically. They're going to put so many in, see what happens and increase it or decrease it until they get to the magic number. There is a more sophisticated way of doing it. They say they have the, the tech so they can spawn random NPCs and see what the limitations are. Server-side OCS won't drastically improve the player count, but the server meshing definitely will. Uh, what are the plans to keep players engaged during lengthy quantum travel? Now, this was a bit of a, an iffy one. They, they said it's a very hot topic at the moment and they don't really want to say just yet. The current discussion they have is just too big because it could disappoint a group or it, or it might not, depending on what, which way they go. We don't know what is going on. They haven't said, but they are close to being able to say. So we'll see what happens there. Next question is, what about ships spawning at outposts? Will we be able to do this? And they do want to have that. They don't want us to be able to tell it to be a, like a teleporting system. Physically flying and then despawning your ship and then respawning your ship is the way that they want it. So hopefully they'll get that in soon because at the moment that bug that despawns people's ships at outposts is very annoying. Another question about the hair tech. What's happening? We saw a bit of it. Haven't seen anything since. They're finalizing the asset creation pipeline. Developing the tools to help speed this up. Uh, there will be more hairstyles coming after these tools are done. So like with most things, they need to create the tools to allow for that system to be very streamlined. It's pointless going through and building stuff. They might as well get the tool and the tech and the back end stuff sorted now. And then they can really start pushing things out. The next question is, will we ever see a direction finder or like a compass? And they say, yes, they do want this there. The plans to add it to the ship hood soon. Nothing mentioned regarding FPS or on foot or planet side, but it will likely come one day as the planets do have their poles. So hopefully that won't take too much work. Uh, someone asked about scars and tattoos. Their current updates are being worked on for the NDA face stuff. Uh, they do have tech for decals like tattoos, but it doesn't really work well with scars. So I think a bit more exploration in that is needed. One of the questions was, what are the tech challenges to get ship to ship and ship to station docking done? Now, Chris Roberts is actually working on a way to get ship to ship docking. This would allow for the detachable Merlin, for example. Persistence is needed to make sure ships spawn attached like the Constellation Merlin combo. Then there is atmosphere and compression between each ship uh, as you board. They say it's coming together. Chris is working on it, so it's in safe hands. Anyway, that was Star Citizen Live, guys. Some great information there. I love these sit downs and chats. We will definitely go over this on the streams a bit more. So be sure to follow me over there. So also this week, the latest portfolio post highlighted Ascension Astro, which is a stealth component manufacturer. And finally, the latest monthly report and Squadron 42 report is available. But don't worry, I shall break that down into separate videos coming later this week. So you don't have to read through it. So that brings us to the end of the show. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a video. Hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed it and share the video with all your friends. If you like what I do and want to help me make it better, follow the link below to my Patreon page to learn more.